Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, July 25th, 2016. Let's start off with a visible satellite picture of a good deal of the Atlantic Basin. A couple of things that should jump out at you. We do have some convection here over the very warm Gulf of Mexico, associated with a surface trough in here, a little weak area of low pressure. That's about it. Uh, none of the models really showing anything developing with this, so no worries there. But some of this rainfall and convective activity, convection, by the way, is just another word for thunderstorms. Little area of convection here, a lot of convection here. Uh, think about uh, convection as being upward motion in the atmosphere, like this, okay? So rising motion is convection and leads to showers and thunderstorms. They're a terrible drawing of a thunderstorm, but that's what convection is, think like a convection oven, uh, heat, upward motion, all of that convection. So when we see these areas of bright clouds, that is convective activity or thunderstorms, and uh, this over the Gulf of Mexico looks interesting, but it's probably not going to do much. But it will bring some rainfall to portions of the Gulf Coast over the next couple of days. You also notice that the rest of the Atlantic Basin is remarkably clear. No cloud cover, no convection to speak of, just some low clouds uh, associated with a stable air mass. And uh, by the way, that's another indication of convection. Uh, when you have a lot of convective activity, that's usually indicative of an unstable air mass. And so the lack of convective activity out in this region, for example, plus you can see these low clouds sitting in here, tells us that this is a stable, dry, probably warm in the mid-levels atmosphere. And the Atlantic Basin is pretty quiet for the most part. Looking out farther to the east towards Africa, you notice some shower and thunderstorm activity on the northwest part of the continent, convection, and uh, deeper convection over the Sahel and parts of the equatorial region. It's just every day things are getting closer to when you know, the pot will boil, so to speak. You know, this is literally, like I mentioned the other day, it's like we are watching a pot waiting for it to boil. And because of all the technology we have, we can watch it pretty much 24-7, and it seems like it takes a long time to get there. But when I see showers and thunderstorms starting to break out over portions of Morocco and just generally over the northwest part of Africa, north of 20 degrees latitude, then you know the Saharan air layer is going to eventually get beaten back as the air pressure begins to lower through the natural progression of things in the Atlantic Basin. This is a nice chart from the National Hurricane Center's Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch down at the National Weather Service in Miami, Florida here. And uh, it's a nice surface map so you can see the different areas uh, on the map uh, aside from the satellite picture. This shows you the uh, sort of the schematics of the weather, if you will. And you can see there's a low pressure area over Western Africa, a tropical wave here, pretty much naked void of any convection we saw that another tropical wave getting ready to move through the islands weak little surface trough here uh, passing between haiti and eastern cuba and then there's that surface trough with a very weak uh, area of low pressure in the gulf of mexico and generally speaking you see the pressures out here running just a little bit above normal maybe maybe slightly lower than normal over here but not enough to really start to pile the air up when you slow down the atmosphere at the, at the surface uh, with lower pressure in the tropics, uh, then you have convergence where the air can come together and then the convergence leaves, uh, leads to upward motion, generally if the atmosphere will allow, and that is convection. And we just don't have that right now, even though we do have a line of convergence through here, this monsoon trough where the air comes together reverses direction more westerly towards the African continent. But, you know, you need all the ingredients in place. And right now we have a few, but we're still missing a couple, the instability and the convergence and some other things like that. But again, that's because it's July and it's not August yet. It's not late August, it's just late July. And it won't be long and things will start to change. I assure you, at least as sure as I can be. One of the keys to that will be the eastern Pacific calming down. We still have a pretty strong Hurricane Georgette. Frank over here off the Baja, which is weakening. In fact, both of these systems will be weakening and moving on out into the open water where nothing will stand in their way in terms of impact. 
um, and nothing will be there for them to continue to strengthen. The water temperatures north of these systems are cooler. The air mass up here is cooler, more of a marine layer in the uh, tropical Pacific out here. Actually, they're leaving the tropics and moving up into the subtropics uh, eventually, and um, that's where, and you can see here, that stable air mass resides, waiting to just kind of kill these off. Cooler Pacific waters up here coming out of the uh, eastern side of the Pacific, and that will kill these systems off. There's the leftovers of Darby, made landfall in Hawaii along the Big Island. Uh, a lot of rainfall, probably a few issues related to that, but I didn't see anything that was calamitous. A good adjective to use, right? There was no major damage, but uh, certainly a nuisance, and we talked about that that would be the case. A few reports of some gusty winds, increase of waves, very heavy rainfall, some flash flooding, etc., but nothing um, that's extraordinarily bad, okay? They didn't get hit by another hurricane in Niki, and usually you have to have these systems come in from the south and then turn across Hawaii like that to really have a big impact in terms of wind. But there was pretty heavy rain there. don't want to discount that. Um, but it was not a hit by a hurricane and all of the full-fledged force that something like that would bring. Nevertheless, heavy rainfall can be a problem. Luckily for Hawaii, the system would be moving on, and that should be it for a while. So let's look at the anomalies for today, July 25th here. The Noah Nesdis sea surface temperature anomaly. Another way of saying departure from normal. Uh, you see here in the Pacific that the water has cooled with these different cyclones that have formed as of late. You also see the La Nina trying to kick in. Pretty cold here in the El Nino, what we call Enso 3.4 region, the uh, Enso region or El Nino Southern Oscillation phenomenon is divided up into these different regions. And uh, generally the index that is most commonly cited uh, takes into account water temperatures in roughly this area, the 3.4 area. And those are pretty cold right now, uh, almost to moderate La Nina levels from just a sort of thumb in the water type of measurement. Um, the Climate Prediction Center monitors this stuff. You gotta have it below a certain threshold for a certain amount of time and we're not quite there yet, but maybe August and September uh, they will declare that we are in weak La Nina conditions. It certainly seems that we're well on the way. Now I want to talk about something really important here in the Atlantic Basin. Notice that we do have sort of this curved shape to this warm anomaly here through the main development region and then areas west of Africa and the Iberian Peninsula. I talked about this on Friday. It has strengthened even more. Uh, this entire region through here nice and warm. Then you have the cold area in the middle and then the western Atlantic is very warm as well. When have we seen something like that before? Well, let's look at it on a larger scale, the global map, if you will. So here it is, sort of your, uh, not quite a horseshoe, but close enough. It's definitely a crescent shape to the warmth. And let's look at 2004. Very similar, wouldn't you agree? There's very warm water east of the Iberian Peninsula here, or west of it, I'm sorry, west of Africa. Uh, cold sort of here in the middle. Now it certainly does extend up past Iceland and uh, which is right here into the south of Greenland. Let me draw in yellow if it'll show up. Nope, not very good. Uh, so it certainly is more of a horseshoe shape way back in 04, but if we just kind of toggle between the two, they're not that dissimilar. You know, it's not like this is just completely filled in with blue up here. And so, you know, it's fairly warm south of Greenland pretty much where it should be to a little bit colder south of Iceland there. But the rest of it, pretty darn warm, extending through the main development region, Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So I think that when we get to early August, we are gonna see perhaps an increase in people's predictions for the upcoming peak of the season. Not substantially, but maybe an extra storm, extra hurricane, maybe an extra major hurricane, something like that, which could all be one and the same. Uh, when it's all said and done, that one storm could become a hurricane that becomes a Category 3, for example. Uh, this is just a very uh, different water temperature profile than we have seen 
over the last several years. Remember, I mentioned on Friday's update that in 2013, this region here cooled anomalously around this time of year, and this year it certainly isn't. It's warmed. So, you know, again, if we compare to 2004, it really isn't too different. Certainly the Pacific is a little different overall, but just looking at the Atlantic Basin, not too dissimilar from 04, and there's probably other years that are similar as well, but the most recent in terms of a big August and September time period looks like 2004 to me. We'll see if uh, I'm right about this hunch or if there's still just too much else going on that you really can't pin it down like that. But I just thought it was an interesting observation. You know, it's not like I'm making these maps up. There they both are uh, available on the Internet. So let's look at actual sea surface temperatures. This, too, continues to absolutely stun me. Why? Well, right here, let me get rid of the telestrator and let's look at the scale. So this green color and everything to the right of it is 26 degrees Celsius, or right around 79 or so, and higher. All right, so anything on the right side of the scale, warm enough for hurricane activity, generally speaking, on the skin of the ocean. So let's find that 26 degree isotherm. There it is right there. Isotherm is a line of equal temperature. So as I draw in red, everything south of this line is now warm enough to support hurricane activity. And look how close that is to the northeast, for example. If you had a hurricane cutting up, you know, and they will do so pretty fast. And this is just a hypothetical. It's got to traverse a lot of warm water, and it's only late July. What is this going to look like at late August? We'll see, certainly. But this is, <laughs> I mean, you see something like this, and you have to say, man, you better hope that there doesn't be a hurricane running the coast this year. Because farther to the south, look at this, 30 degrees Celsius. That's right, that's not a typo. There's 30 degrees Celsius, there's 29. And that runs all the way up here, the 29 Celsius isotherm, uh, almost in, in just a hair north of 38 degrees latitude. That is absolutely incredible. The western Atlantic and the northwest Atlantic specifically quite a bit warmer than it should be and that warm water butts right up against the coastline in many locations including up here in the Delmarva region. Delaware, Maryland, the Chesapeake Bay, the tidewater of Virginia. Very warm water temperatures. Um, it's interesting too, you have just a tiny bit of upwelling right here near the North Carolina Outer Banks, the Northern Outer Banks, and westerly winds came through and caused uh, local upwelling where water temperatures dipped uh, into the 60s. The, the gradient is so tight and this resolution is not good enough to see that, but I, I heard it firsthand from one of the members of our Hurricane Track subscription service that we have. He was talking about it on our chat today. In the Gulf of Mexico, always going to be warm enough, but even here, warmer than it should be overall. Very uh, ridiculous temperatures. 31 degrees Celsius up here along the shelf water of the northern Gulf. Um, this convection that's over here I showed you on the satellite picture will temper this just a little bit, mix it up some. Uh, easy to do so in the Gulf, but then it'll rebound fairly quickly. Uh, always, like I said, going to be warm enough for catastrophic hurricanes in the Gulf. And then when we look at it from the ocean heat potential perspective, it really does just drive it home that the Western Atlantic here is, to borrow a phrase from Joe Bastardi over at Weatherbell, I've heard him say this many times, it is loaded for bear. I mean, we are talking about very high ocean heat content for the geographic location that it's in, off the uh, southeast coast, uh, very high on the scale, per se, here in the Caribbean, as high as I've ever seen it for such a large area this early in the season. So, you know what? It's just waiting. It is absolutely waiting. And I want to say this, because I don't know what's going to happen, right? I don't absolutely know. I mean, there could be 10 hurricanes and none of them hit the United States, just like 2010, for example. A lot of hurricane activity, but not a single one made it to U.S. shores. But anybody here, basically west of 60 degrees longitude, all right, you guys over here where the land masses are, do something to be ready. At least make sure you're paying very close attention 
that you have thought about a plan in place for what's going to happen because with this kind of fuel in place all we need is the match so to speak and it'll go off and I'm starting to get a little worried about it that if something comes along we could have something that is beyond just interesting and you know wow we better get ready for that this could be very serious so we need to take it as such and do something to prepare alright make sure you have at least thought about it it's been a long time for a lot of people since there's been any hurricane threat definitely use this time while it's quiet to assess your own personal situation and at least be ready to go if something happens because eventually you might show up at least the hurricane that affects you in this week in hurricane history and I don't want to laugh about it but you know it's true if you don't do anything boy it can really be bad for you so at least do something knowing what's sitting out there and the potential that exists you want to make sure you're ready this year maybe more so than the last few years uh, for sure so what is it for this week in hurricane history where well, it actually wasn't a hurricane but it's during hurricane season so that counts do you know what this one is it's Claudette 1979 this week in hurricane history look at the track of this came out of the MDR main development region uh, never made it to hurricane strength the wind shear through here was too much plus it ran over the greater Antilles the islands here chopped it up a little bit or a lot and it never made it to hurricane intensity it looks like a very similar track uh, to hurricane Ike in some ways uh, but we know what happened with hurricane Ike it was very large and very destructive well Claudette here in 1979 brought tremendous rainfall to parts of Texas and Louisiana and we can see that on this graphic that the National Weather Service out of Houston Galveston prepared as a slide that I want to make sure they get credit for they did the work for me this is the uh, sort of like your hydrologic version here showing the rainfall impact which was absolutely insane down here in parts of Texas and Louisiana Alvin Texas unofficially 43 inches of rain I don't know exactly what that I mean I guess it's not measured by an, an official weather gauge rain gauge from the weather service so it has to have that distinction as unofficial but I don't care how you cut it man 43 inches of rain is ridiculous you think about all that rainfall that took place in Texas and Louisiana this spring and you can imagine something like that happening now would absolutely be catastrophic no question about it Allison was bad enough in 2001 and so uh, that's what happened this week it made landfall on these dates and kind of stalled over the Alvin area in Texas not far from Houston uh, on the 25th of July uh, in 1979 so there you go as we move through the next few weeks the hurricane history uh, look back will become more and more interesting as you can imagine in fact I'll have to start picking and choosing and there will be a time too when we have stuff going on in the Atlantic that's more important than sort of the novel look at hurricane history that I'll just suspend that and we'll just stick with the topics at hand but for now something interesting to go over since there's nothing really brewing in the Atlantic Basin alright so that's it for me for today uh, really nothing else to uh, you know I keep thinking back to the those warm temperatures in the Atlantic and I just want to emphasize that one more time if you haven't really considered preparing look at that and say okay at least I'm gonna think about a plan alright at least think about it uh, and maybe even take it a step further than that because once we get into August into September especially late August I believe at that point in time the track race will begin and things are gonna be very busy and you know what if I'm dead wrong and nothing happens then hey all the better because nobody will have to suffer but we know what can happen when these things come along and people do nothing to prepare or very little and I don't want that to happen. All right? So anyway, do something. Be positive about it. Have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Hey, thanks as always for tuning in and being a part of this. Hopefully you learned something from it. And I will be back with you again tomorrow uh, with another look at what's going on then.